Hello everybody and welcome back. So this is going for again we said that chapter five is one of the most important chapters in the book. And this in some ways is the most important section of that chapter. It has to do with sampling distributions. And um, it's important because it kind of justifies the whole reason why we do samples and surveys. Okay. Um, because obviously a lot of times the population is just too big. Um, to compute, you know, like a population mean or a, a, some other parameter. So we use, we used, um, take samples and sample means uh, to get some information and make some, make some conjectures. I want to start by doing a rather stupid example. And I say it's stupid because this involves a population of exactly three, um, three items, three data values. And we're going to assume that Let's suppose it's too taxing for us to compute the mean when, when we're, we're dealing with a set of size 3, but we're somehow we're able to do it with a set of size 2. Okay, now, of course, in reality, we can easily compute the mean of this. The mean is uh, 4.667 if we bound to two decimal places, and the standard deviation is 2.0548. We round to four decimal places. We can do that on our calculator. But let's say, what if we were just taking um, random samples of size 2? Now, we, we're going to see that if we take all the possible, the, there are exactly three possibilities for the first data value. And there are three possibilities for the second data value. And that's how we get nine possible random samples. Now, this is kind of silly because you can see that we have 2, 5, and 5, 2 um, li listed twice, and we have uh, 2, you know, we have 2, a lot of, like, 2 repeated twice and stuff like that. And so, if we were doing a, if we were do actually doing a random sample, we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't pick the same person twice, right? And... But we want to make this completely random. To make this purely random, we want to, we just want to allow the, well, make sure that the second person we pick is completely independent of the first person we pick or the first item. And so that's why we do this. So with that in mind, we see that there are nine possible um, samples, okay? And where order matters, at least. And then we can compute the sample means this way, right? We see that, you know, for example, obviously the, the mean of this 2 and 2 is 2. Uh, the mean of 2 and 5 would be 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5 and so on. Okay. So here are all the sample means. And we put those, so we list these, all these uh, put together in a, its own data set. And we, when we compute the mean of this new set, we see the mean is the same. 4.667, but the standard deviation is different. Standard deviation is 1.4529. All right. Now that's uh, you'll notice that it's a little smaller, and it kind of it kind of makes sense, if you will. This is it's slightly you know they're slightly not spread out as obviously they they seem to be spread out um, a little bit more in our original population. Uh, we can also write a probability distribution um, for the, this random variable we can call x bar. Okay, so we can say if our experiment involves, you know, taking a, taking a random sample of size two and computing the mean, we'll let x bar be that mean. So it's a random variable, so it's going to have its own. In this case, it's a discrete probability distribution, and so we see that. Um, we see this is the um, probability distribution, and we can see that the reason why it's nine because there are nine possible outcomes. For example, it's for 3.5 occurs twice in here, so it'd be, the probability of that would be two ninths. Okay. Now, in general, we're not going to be doing this in what we're doing for the rest of this this chapter, but I wanted to show you that every sample size has its own probability distribution, and we denote mu x bar as this mean and the standard deviation we do it by sigma x bar we sometimes we call this the standard error of the mean and the formula for that is it's pretty straightforward 
um, fact is that if we take a random sample size n um, and we look at the, ran the random variable x bar, its mean is the same as the original mean of the population. And sigma, um, the standard error of the mean, or the standard deviation of x bar, is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And sure enough, we, it turns out that if you check that um, if you were to take the original standard deviation 2.0548 on our previous example and divide by the square root of 2, you actually get this number. This number right here. So that's what the uh, new standard deviation is. So the, st so the mean stays the same. The standard deviation is different. We are not going to prove this. Um, if you want to see the proofs, you, I suggest you take a um, STAT 476. Um, but the, the important thing is that it's, it's different and it's actually smaller because we're dividing by a number which is bigger than 1. So this goes down. So the sample means are actually compressed more. There's less variation in the sample means. Now, um, now this, we are also interested, we would really like it if, in addition to knowing these um, means and, and standard deviations, we'd like the, the distribution of the sample means to be normal. And the good news is that will, they will be, if one of two conditions are met. And this is to call this, this is what the central limit theorem calls, it says. Um, it says, if random samples of size n are taken from a population with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, and either one of these two uh, items is true, that is, either the population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then the sample means are normally distributed with mean mu x bar, which we just said is mu, and standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, that's a very important theorem. And again, if you want, we're not going to prove this in this course. You're welcome. Um, if, you get, if you want to see a proof, I suggest you take STAT 476. But we will be using this um, to do to do this because that 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 gives us a, a permission to use the, the, the symmetric, nice, nice little symmetric bell curves. And then we can, to compute, we're, a lot of times we're going to be interested in the probability of um, taking a, the probability that the sample means are in a certain range. Now, how we're going to play this game is we're going to see, well, let's say if we take a sample mean and we'll just say, is it likely that we were to get this sample mean. Uh, what is the probability that the sample mean is in this range? And if it's unusual, if, it, if, it, if that event is unusual, if the probability is less than 5%, then we might want to make, take a note of that. All right, so we're going to see um, some examples. And in fact, let me just go through the first example together right now. Um, so in this case, we have a population where the stand, where the mean is 150, the standard deviation is 26, and the sample size is 50. N is always going to represent the, the sample size from here on out. So mu x bar is just going to be the same as mu. So mu x bar is 150, and sigma x bar is going to be 26 divided by the square root of 50. Okay. And that turns out to be uh, 3.67696. Uh, and I'm putting these extra decimal places so we don't, so, because if you round it, just round it off to one decimal place, you might have some round off error. Um, it won't always be too big a deal, but it's always, it's always best to include as many decimal places as you can. All right, so now if we wanted to find the probability, let's say that our sample mean is between 140 and 160, what we're really doing, what we have now is, we, we by the way, we can, with the central limit theorem says that because our sample size is bigger than 30, 
we know that the sample means are normally distributed, so we can use this to um, this normal curve to describe the sampling distribution of the sample means. And so what we it's centered at 150. And so we're kind of interested in what is the probability that the that x bar is between 140 and 160. So basically, we want to find this the probability which is represented by this area. Now the so the thing here is now we know we can we know how to find the areas like these. We use the normal CDF command on our calculator. The left boundary is 140, the right boundary is 160, the mean is 150, but the standard deviation now is 3.676. So that's the thing, that standard deviation is much smaller, is different. And this turns out to be 0.993. So it's a 99%, more than 99% will be in these, um, these, in this boundary. And the reason for that is, you okay, okay, you might seem like 140 isn't that far away from 150. But... The actual difference is not what we're interested in, is how many standard deviations are we away from the mean. And because this is certainly more than two standard deviations, you know, if you multiply this by, by two, it's still less than 10, right? So 10, here we're taught 10 is almost three standard deviations away. And we said that, you know, we said that, you know, in general, when you're three standard deviations away, that's very, very unusual. So that's why we not we shouldn't be that surprised um, that it's 99% probability. Um, if we wanted to find the probability that X, the sample mean, is less than 146, well, here's 150, here's 146, and we're talking about this region right here. So, probability of that would be we use normal CDF of negative infinity, which we can write as negative 10,000 if we want. That should work fine. Uh, 146, 150, and 3.67696. And this turns out to be, when you calculate it, it's uh, 0.862. Um, and I think, let's see, did I do something wrong here? Um, yes, I did. Yes, I did because, okay, it's not point, that's, there's no way that this should be that, that, um, so let me just pause, let me come back here, let me pause the video for a second. Okay, let me just grab my calculator, so I'm just going to do this right here, so. Let me just remind you uh, to find the use normal CDF. And in this case, we would use negative 10,000. Comma 146. Comma 150. Comma 6 point. Or 3.6. Okay, that's more like it. So it's 13.38, about 13 or 14 percent, so 0.138. Okay. And then finally, um, probability that x bar is bigger than 168. Well, you can be, be sure that it would be, this is going to be very small um, because it is so far away from the mean, right? The gap between here is here 18, and we're talking more than 18, so it's more than um, more than six, five, five standard deviations away from the mean. And sure enough, if you do, if you compute this on your calculator, this would be um, 
168, comma, 1000, or 10,000, uh, 150, V.67696. This turns out to be 0 .000, 000, 000, zero, zero, zero uh, 4, I think. Okay. Basically zero. Okay. There's a not technically it's a non-zero number, but it's very, very small. Okay. All right. So um, we will do some more examples in the next video. So I'll see you then.